Our final speaker for this session is Vanessa Torres, Chief Technical Officer of South 32. Please come up. Vanessa Torres became CTO of South 32 in July 2020. She is responsible for technology, innovation, business optimization, capital projects, as well as health, safety, environment, and technical stewardship. Vanessa joined South 32 in August 2018 as Chief Technology Officer. Before this, she was Vice President, Operational Infrastructure for BHP Western Australian Iron Ore. She has over 28 years of global mining experience across Canada, Australia, Brazil, Peru, and New Caledonia, and has held various senior roles at BHP and Vale in strategy, projects, business development, and operations. Vanessa holds a doctorate and master's degree in minerals engineering from the University of Sao Paulo and a Bachelor of Science from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. She was also a visiting scholar at the University of British Columbia, where her research focused on the application of AI to the mining industry. Finally, Vanessa was named as Outstanding Woman in Resources at the WA Women in Resources in March 2017, and went on to be named Exceptional Woman in Australian Resources at the National Awards in September 2017. Please welcome Vanessa. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Wangata people, and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. I would like also to acknowledge the organizers of Diggers and Dealers, all of you here, and those joining us online. Before we begin, I'll draw your attention to the important notices in, on the screen. And those of us here in the room are fortunate to be able to gather here today. Many of our colleagues around the world continue to face challenges and restrictions from the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. And my thoughts are those who cannot be here in person. It is a pleasure to be here and to share some insights into our strategy, particularly in relation to our portfolio transformation, our work to reduce our emissions, and how technology and innovation are helping us to achieve our objectives. But before, I'll begin by sharing a little bit about my background and how it has shaped my approach to my role. My journey started when I was about five years old, growing up in Brazil. I was inspired by my grandfather, an engineering professor, and decided I was going to be an engineer who would travel the world and work in different places. Fast forward to today, and I have been an engineer for almost 30 years, and in leadership roles for 20 of those years. The mining industry took me around the globe, and the footprint of my career is now similar to the footprint of the mining industry, from Brazil and other countries in South America, to Canada, and then Australia. And when I think about my career, the best part is not the aspects of the projects I have led or the performance of the operations I ran. These are all important, and I'm proud of them. But the best part is the people I have met across the globe, people in my workplaces and in the community. The best part has been engaging with different cultures and learning to think in different ways. Learning to innovate. I have spent half of my career in operational roles where the focus is to deliver today 
and half of my career in strategic roles, where the focus is to reinvent tomorrow. And in my role as Chief Technical Officer at South 32, I have the privilege of doing both every day. Now, I'd like to share a little bit about who we are. South 32 is a globally diversified mining and metals company, and we produce bauxite, alumina, aluminum, metallurgical coal, manganese, nickel, silver, lead, and zinc at our operations in Australia, Southern Africa, and South America. And our purpose is to make a difference by developing natural resources, improving people's lives now and for generations to come. We are trusted by our owners and partners to realize the potential of their resources. And this purpose is underpinned by a simple strategy focused on optimizing the performance of our operations, unlocking their potential, and identifying new opportunities to create value for all stakeholders. As I am sure is the case of many of you, many of us, the past 18 months have been challenging as we continue to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. From the start, our response to COVID-19 has been aligned with our purpose and focused on three areas. Keeping our people safe and well, maintaining safe and reliable operations, and supporting our communities. We continue to follow the advice of governments, their agencies, and our own experts wherever we operate. We see technology as an enabler in protecting the health and the safety of our people, and we have used it to support our pandemic response, including thermal cameras, pre-screening apps, and real-time contract tracing. We are supporting vaccination programs led by governments and health authorities to provide fair access to vaccines. Our GEMCO operation worked closely with the Northern Territory Health Department to establish a vaccination center where more than 1,500 people have been fully vaccinated, including our residential five for employees, but importantly, members of the local communities and traditional owners. In Colombia, our contribution to the national COVID-19 vaccination program includes purchasing vaccines and vaccinating our employees, our contractors, and their families. And in coordination with the government in Mozambique, our Mozal operation recently launched its vaccination program for employees and contractors, which also provides for their families to be vaccinated. The 2021 financial year was pivotal for South 32. We completed our divestment of the South Africa energy coal business, a significant step in the transformation of our portfolio and delivery of our strategy. We were pleased to fulfill our vision for the divestment by putting the business on a pathway to, became, to become sustainable, 
for the benefit of its employees, customers, and local communities, and eventually transferring the ownership to a black-owned and operated company. Consistent with South Africa's transformation now imper imperative. In the last year, we also divested our Temco manganese alloy business in Tasmania. The divestments of South Africa Energy Co. and Temco significantly simplify and improve our portfolio. Reducing our capital intensity and improving our underlying operating margins. In the last financial year, we achieved our first short-term emissions reduction target of keeping our scope one emissions below our 2015 baseline. We are proud of this achievement, but we also know there is more work to be done to reach the goal we set in 2015 of net zero emissions by 2050. Our approach to climate change is aligned with our purpose and fully integrated with our strategy and capital allocation and focuses on two key objectives, decarbonizing our existing business and adding growth options to focus our portfolio on the base metals needed for a long carbon future. To achieve the first objective, we have set a medium term target to reduce by half our operational emissions by 2035 compared to our 2021 baseline, which will be a major step towards meeting our net zero goal. We will deliver this target by decarbonizing our operations, securing green energy, and designing our growth projects to be carbon neutral. We are investing in efficiency projects, shifting to low carbon energy sources, applying low carbon design principles, and evaluating new technologies. And to achieve the second objective, we are reshaping our business to increase our exposure to base metals. The Hermosa project in Arizona is one of the most exciting projects in the industry and has three elements the Taylor Zinc lead and silver deposit, the Clark Zinc, silver and manganese deposit, and the broader land package. Our team is progressing a pre-feasibility study for Taylor, and we recently released an updated mineral resource estimate of 138 million tons we hire zinc, lead, and silver grades. Study work to date has confirmed a preference to pursue a dual shaft development configuration that prioritizes early access to a higher grade ore. A scoping study for Clark deposit is evaluating the potential to produce a manganese product used in electric vehicle batteries. In a further 15 regional prospects have been identified across the large mineralized land package and testing of the highest priority targets is underway. Also, our Ambler Metals joint venture in Alaska, where we have a 50% shareholding, is progressing a pre-feasibility study 
for the high-grade Arctic copper deposit. There are also several regional targets in that area that are being tested in the 2021 exploration program. And beyond Hermosa and Ambla metals, we are working to build a pipeline by, of options by investing through the drill bit. We currently have more than 20 greenfield exploration partnerships and projects targeting base metals in the Americas, Australia, and Europe. And when we think about our development options, our focus is not only on providing the commodities needed for a long carbon future, but also looking at how we can develop them to be carbon neutral mines. We view Hermosa as a potential next generation mine, presenting an opportunity to redefine the way we operate to deliver transformational safety and productivity outcomes by redefining the relationship between mining and the environment. We are looking at renewable energy, at electric vehicles, and other measures that can contribute to carbon neutrality. And because EMOSA is a development project, we can set it up from the beginning to best serve our long-term objectives. This is a great opportunity and one I'm very, very excited about. And the role of innovation is important. As some of the solutions we will need to decarbonize may not yet exist. So our approach to innovation is underpinned by Innovate 32, a process which focuses our efforts on where we can add sustainable value. Innovate 32 is based on a set of strategic missions to guide our focus in line with our business strategy. Low footprint, securing future resources, market to resource optimization, and future of work. This all shape our vision for the next generation mine, which you deliver transformational safety and productivity outcomes. Our priority innovation mission is low footprint, where we are studying initiatives that will help us reduce our scope one and scope two emissions. We are progressing the carbonization studies with a focus on our most carbon intensive operations where we can make the most material difference. For instance, at Worsley Alumina, here in Western Australia, we will deliver short-term emissions reduction through efficiency measures, including our mud washing project, which is expected to reduce energy and water consumption we have successfully used biomass in place of energy coal in the multi-fuel cogeneration facility since 2018. And we are progressing further studies of low carbon energy sources. Working together is critical. So we can share knowledge, experience, and apply economies of scale to investments and trials. We are already working with partners across the industry to overcome challenges towards decarbonization and share learnings. We are a founding member of the Electric Mine Consortium, 
a group of mining and services companies with the ambition to accelerate progress towards the fully electrified zero carbon and zero particulates mines. Mines powered fully by electricity will help reduce emissions, improve the quality of the working environment through the elimination of diesel particulates, and reduce heat, noise, and vibration. The consortium facilitates the sharing of data, which enables all members to benefit from the insights and analysis from the trials of new technology and machinery. And the challenges we are looking at include mine design, energy storage, light and utility battery electric vehicles, zero carbon underground surface and long haulage, and electrical infrastructure. Our role is to lead the research on the light battery electric vehicles, which will help address the need of commercial, co commercially available battery technology suitable for light vehicles and utility equipment in the industry. We are currently investigating charging and electrical infrastructure and how to optimize the power demand of an electric mine. These are not easy challenges to overcome, but solving them will unlock new ways of working with lower emissions as well as safety and cost benefits. We are also partners in the heavy industry low carbon transition cooperative research center a collaborative venture between industry, government, and research organizations that has been formed to develop and accelerate technologies for heavy industry in order to transition to net zero. It enables the collaboration and knowledge and the sharing between industry partners, which again lowers the cost of trialing new technology. The CRC has recently awarded $39 million from the Australian government over 10 years, which is backed by an additional $176 million of funding and in-kind support for industry, government and research institutions to help accelerate decarbonization across the whole of the heavy industry. In closing, we live in a rapidly changing world, and our industry is constantly adapting. Recently, the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged our people and our business in ways we couldn't have imagined. But together, we have innovated. And in many cases, the new ways of working have been better than they were before. So this spirit of innovation and adaptation will serve us well as we prepare our industry to the future. At South 32, we are preparing our operations and positioning our company for a greener future. And while this will present challenges along the way, we are very excited by the possibilities that lie ahead. And as I have outlined, the resources industry will need strong partnerships to realize its full potential in a low carbon world. And I'm heartened by the collaboration we have enjoyed to date. And I look forward to working with many of you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, for that great presentation on South 32. We're almost at lunch. We've got time for a couple of questions if we have any from the audience. One question that came through on the email, Vanessa, if you don't mind. 
Um, as CTO, how do you address the gap that can form between the corporate level, which generally gathers and analyses big data, and those on the ground running mining operations that are looking for actionable insights? Thanks, and it's a very important question. Uh, as I mentioned, I spent half of my career in project development and operations role. And that's the kind of experience I always look when recruiting people in my team, because in the end of the day, you know, everything we do, you know, no matter where we are working from, is about enabling our frontline uh, employees. So keeping their, our employees safe, ensuring our people are working in a, in a positive culture, and ensuring the work is productive. So if that's not front in mind, then you know, no uh, technical function or, or technology will succeed. So it's all about enabling the line. Thank you. Are there no more questions? OK, we might conclude. Thank you, Vanessa Torres. Thanks everyone, lunchtime in the marquee, thank you. Well done.